these 75 years or the 50 that they were in, in, in power, they ha ran a pretty shabby kind of governance. Mm -hmm. So can they show us in Karnataka, for instance, that they can really govern? Okay. You know, I mean, I think that governance is going to be very, very important in the Lok Sabha election. Yogendra Yadav, is it therefore about the arithmetic of the opposition trying to come together or is it really about providing, as is being suggested by Tablin Singh, there a better narrative of governance? This is all about show me a governance model, whether it's a welfare is governance, a governance model, whether it's pro poor, the five guarantees of the Congress in Karnataka, show me that it works and then you have a better. In many other states where it's need, not needed, states where it's not possible. You know, Uttar Pradesh happens to be one of those cases. And there are so many states where there is no other opposition party to align with. Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, who would you have opposition unity with? So to my mind, the real issue is not opposition unity. That may happen. Mm -hmm. Some kind of alignment of opposition in terms of their narrative may be useful. Mm -hmm. Some political voice unity may be useful. But a grand opposition alliance... Uh, pre-election opposition alliance is not needed. In fact, Karnataka is a very good example. Karnataka, after all, do remember, Congress has won without a unity with a principal third force, namely the Janta Dal Secular. And what has happened there? Mm -hmm. People decided that, all right, Janta Dal Secular was spoiling votes. So in many places where Janta Dal wa was the third spoiler, they just discarded Janta Dal Secular completely. Mm -hmm. So what is important is for opposition to project a, an image, yes, Tablin is absolutely right, image of, a, uh, of, uh, of uh, a political force that can govern, a political force that offers some unity, possibility of working together. Unity is different from a pre-electoral coalition. Uh, electoral coalitions will be uh, coalitions will be formed after elections. To my mind, the more we emphasize on the business of opposition unity, right. the the more it will harm the opposition. We should focus on the larger issue of opposite, you know, of people uniting. If there's anything unity is needed, it's unity of the people, as happened in Karnataka, or unity of civil society and movements organization with the principal opponent of the BJP. That okay. is far more important, and that's something, again, that we saw in Karnataka. I'll come to also issues around which this can uh, coalesce, but uh, Pavan Verma, You've got your former leader, Mamta Banerjee, Nitish Kumar, all of them arguing for opposition unity. Nitish even more aggressively. Mamta Banerjee saying, look, leave, virtually saying, leave Bengal to me. You fight in states where you're strong. Is that the way the opposition should, should be challenging the Modi-led BJP in 2024? Or first offering a more concrete narrative to challenge what Mr. Modi has done, in, you know, challenge Mr. Modi's track record of governance instead? I think in their own ways, opposition leaders are doing that. But we have to ask the question, what alternative do you give to a united party with a defined leader and a narrative and an organized cadre? Mm -hmm. See, Rajiv, this is a very fundamental question. India is, today's India is not the India of 1979, uh, 77 or 1989. Mm -hmm. where a khichdi of parties will be preferred, in my view, as against a stable government at the centre. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. So the opposition needs also a fulcrum. The NDA had the BJP. The opposition, in my view, needs the Congress mm -hmm. as the fulcrum. Now, here lies the actual catch-22. Will the Congress, if it gets stronger and can play this role, be willing to make adjustments or concede space in different states to parties which are stronger or more likely to win or will it then in pursuit of its own goals divide the opposition and this is very clearly seen before us i mean the congress is fighting in telangana i need hardly repeat kcr is leading the opposition congress is fighting kcr beneficiary bjp in West Bengal, the CPIM and the Congress fighting Mamta Banerjee, she won, but the beneficiary BJP. 
in Kerala, you have CPIM and Congress fighting against each other mm -hmm. and you don't know who ultimately will be the beneficiary in due course. Many other states, I can give you the example. So can the Congress, in playing the role of this fulcrum as the party with the only national footprint, allow its ambitions as a tactical matter at this stage your, to dovetail with that of the other leaders of what what is a I, coalition like the UPA. No, no, I take your point. I, no, no, I take your point. Opposition. No, no, I take your point. But you see, Ashok Malik, the interesting aspect is many believe that the BJP finds the Congress, Karnataka was an exception, finds the Congress its perfect enemy. When, when Rahul Gandhi is pitted against Mr. Modi, we saw it in 2014-19, Kamdar versus Namdar was the narrative that they played. In 2019, out of the 185 seats of a direct contest between BJP and Congress, the Congress won less than 10 and the margin was huge. Do you believe the BJP would actually prefer a contest where the Congress is the fulcrum? Do they find it more difficult to fight the regional parties even in a so, general election? So, two points here. Number one, to go back to something Yogendra Yadav said, and I think he was astute, you will probably not have one-to-one -one contest in 400 or 500 seats, but you will have a greater index of opposition unity this time than 2019. In some cases, a bottom-up index of opposition unity, because people will choose the strongest Anti Modi vote if they don't, uh, party if they don't like Modi. Like they eliminated yeah. the JDS virtually in, in Karnataka.